bonjour et bienvenue à l'Université libre de Bruxelles. Even if uh, this time is uh, via Teams, uh, nous sommes très heureux de vous accueillir aujourd'hui. Et uh, je voudrais uh, tout d'abord retenir uh, votre attention pour uh, introduire notre invité spécial d'aujourd'hui. Uh, comme uh, les participants uh, parmi vous uh, savent déjà, c'est notre deuxième atelier de traduction physique. L'année prochaine, uh, notre atelier organisé par uh, la professeure Emilia a lieu en grand succès et on a décidé de maintenir uh, cet atelier. Uh, je uh, suis forte Emoționată, sunt foarte bucuroasă și este o deosebită onoare pentru mine că Emilia este astăzi cu noi. I would like to um, uh, say some words about our special guest. And as uh, uh, you was uh, uh, already, uh, as you know, Uh, la, la présentation en roumain, uh, vous avez déjà uh, uh, eu l'occasion de la uh, recevoir par mail. So, I will not take all the information that you know already. I uh, just uh, want to underline um, maybe... Um, Uh, three or four um, de qualité uh, d'Emilia Ivancu. Uh, first of all, uh, we are at the university and uh, maybe I will start uh, with the fact that Emilia Ivancu is a teacher. Elle uh, enseigne à l'Académie d'études économiques de Bucarest. Uh, et um, elle a uh, fait Uh, elle a obtenu son doctorat avec uh, une thèse qui uh, porte uh, sur uh, le domaine des études uh, postcoloniales d'expression anglaise. I will not uh, read the title. You can see the title of this uh, study. Um, uh, secondly, uh, Emilia Ivancu is a Romanian teacher. And uh, she was uh, teaching uh, Romanian uh, in um, uh, Ampolon, à Varsovia. Et elle a édité, uh, coédité un manuel de langue romaine. Et je vous avoue personnellement, j'adore uh, le titre de ce manuel, qui est un titre atypique, uh, « Le roumain ne mord pas ». C'est une invitation spéciale à apprendre le roumain. Euh, la troisième euh, qualité euh, dans laquelle Emilia Ivan qui est présente aujourd'hui euh, avec nous, c'est euh, sa, sa qualité de, de, tra, euh, de traducteur. Emilia Ivan qui est aussi euh, traducteur et euh, elle a traduit euh, un, le premier roman traduit de celte en roumain euh, qui s'appelle « O ridic valul euh, ». J'avais laissé pour la fin la, la quatrième, euh, euh, le quatrième rôle d'Emilia Ivanko, celle qui me donne le plus d'émotion, j'avoue, parce que euh, je lis, je suis son, un lecteur fidèle, je, je lis régulièrement ses poèmes et je relis toujours avec un grand, euh, un grand plaisir. C'est la chanson euh, qui, qui m'endort le soir et, et je suis vraiment très fière euh, et, et très heureuse d'avoir l'occasion euh, de connaître ses poèmes. Donc, vous avez... Euh, euh, Bien sûr, euh, devinez tout de suite. Emilia Ivanko est, est poète et elle a signé plusieurs euh, volumes. Euh, parmi les volumes de poésie qu'elle a signé, vous avez déjà eu l'occasion de lire au moins les deux que vous avez reçus. Euh, 
encore une fois, tous mes remerciements. Remerciement, je remercie de tout cœur d'avoir euh, accepté notre invitation et d'organiser pour la deuxième fois euh, cet atelier. Et avant de lui donner la parole, je voudrais tout simplement euh, encore remercier nos collègues qui sont aujourd'hui avec nous. Je crois que j'avais vu Alina Iftimie, euh, Nico Hens et Juana Topala. Et je remercie bien sûr nos étudiants qui ont, euh, euh, ont, ont laissé parfois d'autres activités à côté pour pouvoir euh, accorder toute l'importance à notre atelier de traduction aujourd'hui. Emilia, you have the floor. And thank you once again. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you, Alice, for uh, this um, uh, second opportunity to um, organize together with you this um, translation workshop, prismatic translation workshop, poetry prismatic translation uh, workshop, just last, uh, like, uh, last year. Um, so thank you one more time. Thank you, um, our um, present and former colleagues, and also uh, uh, our um, present and former students uh, who decided, as you said, to drop everything and join us today. Um, and I would say that um, today is another occasion for us um, because all we all love languages to celebrate multilingualism, uh, which is uh, at the center of, uh, of our workshop. And um, as we decided right uh, before, uh, actually last year, uh, we will uh, we intend to have a volume um, of uh, the translations that um, are um, are uh, uh, done by uh, our guests so um, i won't um, say too much now i'd like to uh, share my small presentation i thought of this workshop to be a di bit different than last year in the sense that i'd like to introduce to those of you who did not attend last year, just a few words um, about terminology. So what is creative multilingualism and what is prismatic translation and why poetry is probably best um, uh, to approach from this point of view of prismatic translation. Um, the idea of, uh, of a prismatic translation is that um, the translators, so the, the, the uh, attendees, do not necessarily need to know the source language very well or even at all. They need to work with the team, just like we will do today, and translate the given poem by discussing into your their own language. Right, and I think we will have some very interesting languages here just last like uh, last uh, year. Okay, so here is my presentation, right? I won't, um, just a moment, let me start it. So I, I won't linger too long on that because I would like us to have more time for discussions. Uh, for the poem today and hopefully also for the poems uh, that have already been translated by, by some of you um, uh, for today and for which uh, I am, I am um, uh, and we are very, very grateful. So um, the title is in Romanian, right? Um, and I really loved the way uh, Professor Alice Doma um, put into practice uh, uh, what is um, called um, uh, Europanto by one of the former translators of the uh, of the European Commission. It's um, Diego Marani, right? And he's also a, a novelist. And his idea, I mentioned it last year as well, but uh, I think it's a good start for today as well. So the, the idea of Europanto, uh, of course, addresses uh, uh, the peoples of the European Union is that we can speak um, or we can use in one sentence 
several words coming from different languages. And I know that some of the some people might be against this, right? Just oh, okay, because this is this is neither English nor French nor Romanian or Italian and so on. But that's wrong. People who can do that uh, and who can uh, they they have a flexible mind, and flexible mind is also a key term when uh, doing translation. Right, so I really love that. It was at least it was just <laughs> in the spirit of of the of the workshop. So here it is. Uh, Here is another quotation by Diego Marani. I won't read it. Um, it's just this idea that probably uh, we have inside us the, the urge, we, we are born with this, to know as many languages as possible. Of course, we have only a lifetime uh, at our disposal, but uh, even if we cannot speak all languages, we can least, uh, at least have uh, contact with some of them and we can I, I think everybody present here uh, so um, uh, having experience with languages either t as teachers or as students we all know that it's uh, the moment when we recognize a word in another language gives us joy and this is what Diego Marani says in a way uh, what is prismatic translation so um, prismatic translation, as I said, does not mean that uh, the translators should know uh, the source language perfectly, right? They, they might even not know it at all because such um, uh, workshops were organized, for example, in Britain in, uh, in um, gymnasium or high school where the groups of students were of different background, different cultures and different languages, right? And their interaction um, in a way uh, created uh, or, or gave way to creativity. So, uh, also, translation works differently with different kinds of languages. We know that, right? And we discussed this. I gave you this example with Chinese script world, and I think that Pan can very well explain it uh, if if uh, case were. Um, of course, translation can merge with other modes of writing and rewriting. So when we do a translation, um, it's, it's not just words, and it's not just grammar, and it's not just dry language is more than that, is the culture that lies behind the, the, um, the target language. So uh, Matthew Reynolds is actually uh, uh, the person uh, who coined this, this um, term of prismatic translation. I think everyone can imagine if we make a small effort, uh, a prism with all kinds of languages and how a text can uh, take a new life and a new perspective in a new language. And I think that again, uh, my colleagues present here, so um, uh, uh, Alina, Iftima, Nico Hens, uh, uh, Juana, and of course Alice, you all have had experience with uh, students uh, speaking all kinds of languages. Um, it is um, uh, we as native Romanian speakers, I think in a way may be inspired by our students who speak other languages and they start learning and speaking Romanian. And I remember an example from Polish because I, I taught in Poland, as Ali said. Um, there was um, one of my students who, who wrote at some point, Misa făcut târziu. This is an example, which is, of course, a calc after Polish, but it's pure poetry, right? So that me is a data pronoun. So it turned late to me in me, right? It, it's different. We don't say that in, in Romanian, right? We don't say, we don't use that dative there. Uh, while the Polish language uses uh, 
the person, the subject as a proper subject. That means that something comes over. We are not the ones who uh, perceive the, the 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 day turning late or the moment turning late or the night turning late, but it's the late that comes over us, that overwhelms us. Right? So uh, this is where creativity starts working. And of course, I, I don't think it's necessary to mention uh, Joseph Conrad, right, who changed the English language just because um, of his Polish influence. Um, right, why has it? Just a moment. Okay. Did I stop the sharing? No, no. Okay. Do you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was not sure. Uh, all right. Uh, so with poetry, it's even um, it even works better because uh, um, than with fiction, just because poetry is. Um, uh, is subject to even more interpretations, right? And there are some key ideas about creative multilingualism. Uh, <laughs> they are sort of given facts. Languages are important. We all know that they are important because they they are creative, and that's true. And translation is part of that creativity. Um, and I think we also know that the that knowing another language or being able to have contact with another language uh, helps us organizing thoughts in a different way. Uh, I am sure again that I'm not the only one who uh, has found uh, herself in the position of suddenly thinking in another language, right, than in Romania. So the languages um, in a way speak to us or speak to our feelings in certain moments. Even swearing is easier in another language, right? So uh, multilingualism offers alternative uh, ways of perceiving the surrounding world, and it's really, really important, right? And learning a new language, in, or and here we can extend having contact with a new language increases the potential for creative thought. Uh, and that should be it, uh, except for this idea that I thought that prismatic poetic translation is poetry in itself, and we saw that last year. And I'm go I'm sure we will see this now. And here is what I prepared for today. I, I even haven't um, told Alice <laughs> about what the, the poem is for today. I wanted it to be a sort of surprise. Um, because in a way, the poem that I have chosen for us to translate together um, was inspired and was written after last year's um, uh, workshop. And I remember that Proskovia you told me, right, that when you translated uh, last year's poem, you had the chance to speak to your family and to your mother in in your mother tongue, right? The Ganda language. Am I right, Proskovia? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I was really impressed. Uh, so in a way, languages give us a chance to go back to our roots, to our home. A language is a home. Right. I was really impressed by that and I was inspired by our meeting to write this poem. I'm going to read it to you in Romanian and then I'm going to read you a gloss. Right. It's not a proper translation into English. It's just a gloss for you to be able to work on the text when we uh, translate it together today. So after I, tr I read this and I, I, trans I read the, the English gloss, we can start working on certain words or terms that might, um, I won't say cause problems, but raise questions rather in the languages you think of translating. And after that, I, of course, so after reading the poem, I will also ask you who will translate what into what language, right? So here is the poem. Călătoria muta. 20 de primăveri au trecut de când am plecat de acasă. Am plecat cu inima ascunsă și ochii privind spre cerul înroșit. Am plecat după ce limba mi-am tăiat-o cu pumnalul tatălui meu. 
Am jurat că din mine vor de nisip încins și și să nu vor mai ieși. Am jurat că lacrimi nu vor mai curge, pentru că dacă limbă nu am, nu voi mai suferi. Ci 20 de veri, de toamnă și ieri, am călătorit prin lume mută, cu limba tăiată și ascunsă la piept lângă inimă, ca un hoț care se ascunde de razele soarelui și nu poate privi pe nimeni în ochi, nici măcar copacii. După 20 de primăveri, am visat din nou tărâmul roșiatic al Africii. Mama murise de parte de marea pe care n-a cunoscut-o vreodată. Vestea mi-a venit fără ca eu să pot plânge sau jeli, nu aveam limbă. Era mută și sufletul meu ce-o părțit. Am luat atunci, din buzunar, resturile limbii mele retezate. Mai rămăsese doar o lună din ea. Și am început să plâng, să plâng, visând la turbanul mamei de culoarea cerului înroșit, până când plânsul a devenit cântec. Iar eu am putut, pentru prima dată, după 20 de primăveri, să-i vorbesc mamei dincolo de mormânt, iar răspunsul a fost... Tot un cântec. So that's the Romanian text, right? As I said, it was just inspired. I sort of, uh, right, projected um, myself in a way uh, after the, the the interaction with you and after Proskovia's uh, uh, encounter, right, with uh, Ganda language. And here is the The, the 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 English gloss, right? It's the gloss is a sort of trans, word word for word for translation used for such prismatic uh, translation. So, mute journey. Twenty springs had passed since I left home. I left with hidden hearts and I set on the reddened sky. I left after I slit my tongue with my father's dagger. I saw that never would words of hot sand and drought come out of my mouth. I saw that I would shed no more tears, because were I not to have a tongue, I would never suffer again. And for twenty springs, autumns and winters, I traveled the world silent, my tongue cut and hidden in my chest pocket near heart, like an outlaw who hides from the shining of the sun, and cannot look anyone in the eye, not even the trees. After twenty springs, I dreamt again of the reddened African skies. My mother had died far from the sea, she'd never known. The news had reached me, and I could not weep nor keen. I had no tongue. I was mute, and my soul was torn. Then I took the remains of my cut tongue out of my chest pocket, There was so little left as the size of a hazelnut, and I started to weep, to wail, dreaming of my mother's turban red as the skies, until my weeping turned into song, and I, for the first time after twenty springs, was able to speak to my mother beyond grave, and the answer was also a song. Thank you. So I see, I see, I have two typos um, in the text. Do you still hear me? <laughs> yes? Yes. Not? Okay, right. Um, so that is the text. I, I had another, yeah, it's a here. So this is the text. Um, I can... Um, Just a moment, okay. Do you still see it or not? Yes. Okay, right. Um, so I'm thinking of um, maybe going to the next slide where I, so I chose a few words, right, that might cause problems, but maybe uh, I can send you the document with Uh, with the original text and translation so that everyone can have them uh, in front of uh, them, right? And uh, then we come back to, to this and we, uh, we, uh, we start talking and um, 
and translating. Yes, is is that would that be uh, acceptable, Alice? Yes. Okay. All right. So let me see if I can send the the text right here. Okay. Here it is. Mm. In just a moment. Maybe in the meantime, if there is anyone who has any questions so far, it would be great to um, to speak about to, to start the discussion. I uh, guess uh, maybe I don't know. Ha have we got the possibility to write in the chat, Alice, or not? Yes. Yes. OK, because it would be great if you could tell us who can translate in to what language or maybe you can even tell us or and write it in the chat. Anyone? OK, how do I send that? Uh, how, do, how do I send it? I, I don't think it's possible to send it to. Maybe I can. Um, we can put the text uh, on the chat, maybe. If yeah, but I, I'm not allowed to do it, you know. Uh, strange, yes. yeah. I will send it to you just in a second. Um, Uh, and I put the. Mm -hmm. And then you can you can you can do that in in the yes. chat. Okay, so I've just sent it to you. Okay, uh, can anyone write in the chat, or is it only I who cannot write in the chat? Hmm? Anyone? Moi, je ne trouve pas le chat, en fait. I cannot write, but maybe because I'm a guest, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the situation for everyone. OK, so I don't know who is willing to translate. Um, I, I can't see the names. So. Or maybe Alice, you can. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so who would I, I know, for example, that Pan, right? Will you translate into Chinese? Yes, I can try to do it. OK, yeah, it doesn't have to be the final version. Uh, I think you said George, Georgia, Alice, at some yes. point. Georgia, Georgia, what language you will use today for us? Uh, English, uh, French, French, Italian. French or Italian, I don't know. French. You, French. I, OK. He can do both, Emilia. Yeah, why not? Let's see if anyone can will do French and then maybe you'll do Italian. If, okay. If there is anyone who can do um, uh, French as well, right? Um, so, um, well, I don't know if uh, Alina, or would you like to translate as well, or you would would you like to just um, attend it? I think I heard my name. Yes, yes, it will be easier for me to translate into French or English, but I will try into Turkish because I do not see anyone. Uh, uh, in into this list, uh, I mean uh, one of my students here, uh, so I can try uh, into Turkish, but it will be my very first poem translated into okay. Turkish. It's okay. very challenging also for me. Yeah, that's great because we can have the final versions later, right? Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know. Yeah, uh, Proskovia, will you try in Ganda? Yes. Uh, but I haven't received the poem. Yeah, it will be shown in a in a in a minute. OK. Uh, Juana? Yes, I will try in uh, French, of course. OK, French. Uh, I, I don't see the other people there. You know them, Alice. That's why. Uh, yes. uh, hello, Emily. Emily, this is Niku. <laughs> OK, yeah, OK. So I, I am. Uh, I will be trying to well, depending on my time, I will be trying to translate it. Hopefully I, uh, my class won't start by the end of uh, uh, your uh, session. Uh, I will try to translate it in Armenian. Oh. So, but anyway, so I'll do the Armenian version, and if my start, my class starts, then I will send you the the mm -hmm. uh, the version that I have managed to to translate. Okay, okay? that's great. That's thank you. Great. Thank you so okay. much. Yes, thank you. Great. What? Who? Who else? There, I think there are some more students of yours, Alice. 
I saw um, Daniela. Yeah, Daniela. Daniela first. Hello. Uh, I would like to translate it in Spanish, okay. but I have also a, a train to catch. So uh, if I will not be able to send it at the list of the session, I will send it by a mail mm -hmm. if it's okay to. Okay. Yes. Of course. Thank you. Anyone else present and we do not see? Um, yes, uh, I have a preference for French, but I can also try Italian or English if you want. But uh, OK, and your name is sorry, I can't see uh, you because... Quentin Arista. OK. All right, so. All right, <clears throat> so uh, and I suppose that's it, Andra, you will do some English and help me with Romanian, yes? <laughs> yes, sure. Okay, great. I think that's all. Is, is there one, is Juana, no? Juana already? Juana? Yeah. Yes, I asked her already. I don't know. <laughs> I think she, she froze a bit. Her internet froze. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so. Uh, I see only the Romanian version, Emilia, of the poem. Sorry? The Romanian, uh, my Romana. Below. The English is below. It's just there. It's below. In the same. Uh, the... Yeah. The same file. Or not? No, I, I, I cannot see. I, I have okay. only. Let, let me send it again. Oh, here it is. Yeah. It's true, yeah, it was here. So use this document, yes, that I'm sending you now. But uh, everybody have already uh, the Romanian version in the chat, yes? Yeah, it's a slightly different, slightly different. Uh, and I can't even see the chat. No. Anyway, no. I'll, start, I'll start, I'll share again the Romanian version, okay? Until you can put it in the, yeah, and we can use the, the Romanian version here, right? I, I, I will send you by mail. Every everyone will uh, receive by mail the the the, the file. But, but try to send the second document I sent you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So we have here Colatoria Muta. Right. So uh, did you all understand the? I mean the uh, most of the text in 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 uh, in English at least, if not in Romanian. Right. Did you? Is that? Acceptable <laughs> in English, okay. yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now, I I suppose we can start with with the title. How we would say that in in um, how you would say that in your languages? Because uh, so Colotori is a journey, right? And the, the the whole idea of the poem, and I explain a bit for you to maybe to find it easier to translate, is that sometimes languages die, right? So we lose languages. Um, and th that's why, in a way, I was inspired by Proskovia, right? Because the the languages of Africa are in danger. So, and it's not only that. I mean, uh, we know I, I know for from my experience with Welsh and Irish, right, or Breton, and many other languages that simply die, right? And the moment we lose our tongue. Right, because tongue here I translate it as tongue in, into English because tongue can also refer to the just like in Romanian limbo uh, is uh, can be used for the um, the organ right we use to speak, but also for the uh, the language we speak, right? So uh, that's the whole point, and it's a it's very important to think of the word that you might use in the text for um, for uh, the Romanian limb language, right, or tongue, right? So that, that would be a discussion. Uh, but so the whole idea is that um, after losing one's tongue, right, we cannot express our feelings only when when we find the remains of that tongue, we can actually start crying or singing or being happy through that uh, tongue, right? So how would we say Colatoria Muta? 
vocal authority is journey, muta is mute, but it can also be silent. The idea here is that the mood is uh, is for the person who actually cannot speak. How would we say that, uh, for example? I don't know. In, in, fact, in fact, in Turkish, mm -hmm. uh, it will be translated uh, with sessiz yolculuk. Sessiz, it means linishte, quiet. Exactly, that's what I thought that might be. Okay, that's that's very interesting. And is the same word used for someone who cannot speak? So no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So how would how does it sound? Kalatoria muta in Turkish? Sessiz yolculuk. Okay, that's great. Thank you. All right. How about let's see French? Uh, I will say uh, voyage en silence of voyage silencieux. Okay. Of voyager en silence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Transforming the verb, the noun in a in a verb. In a verb. En silence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But the word silent, silencieux, silence, stay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, for the French, um, if uh, it's regarding someone who can't speak, I would say uh, muet. Mm hmm. OK, right. So it's a different it's a different word. Mm hmm. Yes. Oh, I see. OK, so it, it, will, it will be your own choice how you feel the language, because that's the whole the whole point. OK, how about let's say, I don't know, Chinese. <laughs> Can you explain that a bit? Because it's a totally uh, different world. We all know that. <laughs> in, in Chinese, um, it will be something like a uh, Chen which basically means like um, the Chen is more like a reticent, so it's like not talking and something, something not talking and very silent. And Tori it's Lüten, um, so it basically means a, a, tr a trip or a, a, a trip or a journey that is so quiet. Like it's so quiet, yes, yes. Yeah. So again, yes, so similar to, to Turkish and similar maybe to French, again, so the idea of silence. I, I, I thought that there might be, uh, because I also thought about choosing this in into English, silent or mute, yes, and I because it's a gloss, I chose mute. Okay, thank you, Pan. How about Armenian, Nico? Uh, yes, uh, in Armenian uh, there are like the same, uh, this, the, well, the same two versions, right? If you use mute, it will be like harm, chana parutiun, but the word is too in Armenian. The word is too. Uh, it has no connotation. It's like it refers exactly to someone that does not speak, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I would say that also in Armenian to grasp a better uh, uh, like understanding and to grasp a better meaning of what you want to say would be again to use the word silent travel. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what I thought uh, and it would sound uh, the title would sound like Lure Chana Parutiuna. Lure Chana Parutiuna. This is the title, and uh, uh, of course, silent has a, a, a like a grasp of connotation which is like larger than uh, than than mute. Mm -hmm. In Romanian, by the way, calatorie uh, muta uh, suna mai bine decât eu cred că ales bine titlul. Mult mai mult mai plin de 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 sens decât dacă am lua acest silențios care în limba română are o conotație mai strânsă mai. Așa cred eu. Deci în armeană să rezum, ar fi lur ceana paruțion. Mhm. înțeles. Absolut fascinant. Deci deja am început discuția și e fascinant. Mulțumesc, Nicu. Um, Broscovia, how about you? How, how can you tell us about this? What can you tell us about this? So, uh, 
instead of for us in our language, we start with a journey, which is called Olugendo. The word journey, Olugendo, then Olusilise is uh, muted, silent, something. Olusilise. So it's kind of like a journey which is um, not interesting, kind of boring, <laughs> like that. Oh, you see. Okay. And do you use the same words for the person who cannot speak? So someone who, can, who cannot speak really. Can't speak. It's almost uh, say it's kind of the same word but uh, different uh, letters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, good. Thank you. Let's see Daniela Spanish. Uh, just uh, one word, Emilia, if I can. I, yes. I just I just want to. Uh, saluer la présence de Monsieur l'académicien Baudouin Deschartneux qui, qui soutient toutes nos activités et donc euh, il est aujourd'hui euh, parmi, parmi nous. Euh, bonjour Monsieur l'académicien et merci beaucoup de votre présence. Bonjour aussi, <rire> aussi et merci aussi. Uh, bon. Um, so, Spanish, Daniela. Uh, I will say viaje mudo. Okay. Mm, because mm. it gives me uh, a stronger feeling than uh, viaje en silencio. Okay. Yeah, so here we have the similarity, right? So the, the way, yeah. in a way, Spanish and Romanian are related, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how about Italian? Speaking of that, George? Uh, I will say viaggio muto. Oh, okay. Right, so we, we see that they uh, they all three go into the same uh, direction. I suppose that's all for the title. We've gone through all the all the um, languages, and we can <clears throat> have a look now. I I read so those are the primavera or So I use this idea of spring rather than saying twenty years, but that's the meaning, right? So primavera spring. So since I left home, I left home. Uh, um, I left home with hidden heart and eyes set on the red and sky. That would be the English, right? So maybe we can try and translate this uh, just as a full sentence now. So the idea of saying spring and also inima ascuns, the idea probably, so the way to say ascuns maybe would uh, raise some questions and also maybe cerul in roșit because it's not really roșu, roșu means red, right? In Romanian, but I haven't chosen, I don't know why. <laughs> I haven't chosen the red, uh, Roshu, but rather un Roshit, probably because it's I associated with um, with um, the sunset, right? When simply the sky reddens rather than is red. Okay, so that would be uh, that would be the questions here. Uh, I will ask you in this case for the first sentence. Do you have any questions to yourselves regarding choosing uh, the words here? Inima ascunso, maybe, in any language? Is it easy to say? I, I, Emily, I have just one thing to add. Uh, it's something that I have, uh, uh, I have come across like this week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were translating. Uh, uh, I also have a translated uh, uh, translation uh, course in um, in uh, Charles University, and about this first, uh, you know, this first uh, uh, line, "Doa zec de primoveri." We were just curious, and for example, uh, in Czech language, they use uh, so for passing of years, they use uh, summers. And I know that, for example, and in Armenian, they use autumns. So you see in Romanian, uh, springs are passing. In Czech language, uh, uh, summers are passing. And in Armenian, autumns are passing. So I think that this is also uh, related to culture. And it's really, really very interesting. I'm curious how they, uh, this will be rendered in other languages too. Yeah, to tell you the truth, this is the influence of another language of another language I speak because 
spring is used in Welsh. So I have come across it in a way so many times that I actually transposed it from Welsh into Romanian. I don't know if we would say that in Romanian actually using spring, but that's where the creative multilingualism and I'm really uh, exactly. uh, grateful for your remark. Yes, because it's it's um, I was inspired by another language. You see, when I wrote that, that's absolutely amazing. So that. That's something that uh, so yeah, maybe that's a very good question. So how do we how do you count the passing of time? And there's also uh, a very interesting Korean uh, movie. Uh, I think by it's by Kim Ki Do, and it's called uh, Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter, and Spring. I don't know if you know it, but I I think that I also have this in mind when I I'm thinking of my poem uh, maybe I don't know if anyone knows it maybe not it's very good so it's again but there the spring is the one that comes twice again so uh, so Armenian you said what language with so no with Czech you said it was another uh, yeah so uh, uh, we were translating so in Czech they counted in sp uh, summers Okay. And Armenians, they count it in autumns. Autumns. So this, uh, yeah, I would not ex uh, expect uh, uh, Czech people to be so uh, uh, solar people, right? To to count it in summers, but since they are more, uh, I don't know, like they are like more open to light and. But mm -hmm. Armenian in autumn, so I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. And in Romanian, because I think that we use this. 20 de primavera, 30 de primavera. Oh, yes. I think that we yeah. use it maybe also as a sort of euphemistic, maybe. Yes. Uh, and saying some, wishing someone happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. if you are like 50 or something, and then you don't use, you have like, you you have like, it's a that's sort of that, like yes. a euphemism if you want. Yes, that's oh. true. That's very true. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Me yes, please. Uh, yes, maybe uh, we refer to Primavera because it's the first uh, season is the burn season. Yes, yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah, many, yeah. and if we think about Romanian uh, tradition, use a uh, we have a lot of uh, tradition uh, related to the spring. Okay. And the first, the first uh, day of the year was uh, in the ancient uh, times, uh, the first day of spring. Mm -hmm. That's true, that's true. The, the, the year started in spring, actually. That's true. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's see how do we con count this. I don't know, maybe in Turkish, last time was Turkish. Uh, yes, I was uh, reflecting a little bit. Now it is quite interesting. In Turkish, we count with Bahar. But in fact, uh, Bahar, it means um, a, a season between a, a hot season and a cold season. Because for uh, Primavera, for spring, we say Ilk Bahar. We mean the first Bahar. And it's for like autumn, where we have for, the, the, say it's, it's pre-spring. It's the same. <laughs> and for for autumn, we are saying in Turkish "son bahar," the final, the 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 the, the final season between the cold and warm and uh, cold uh, season. Interesting. So it is bahar, but we don't know it is spring or it is autumn. I see. I see. Amazing. Right. Uh, let's see French Italian. How would you say that? French, Italian, yeah. Spanish, let's take them together. Yes, uh, regarding French, uh, actually, we say also spring, uh, oh. printemps for, uh, for uh, the, the year. And I, I find it fascinating to see that uh, a lot of languages have the same uh, concept because um, as said before, for the renewal of life and so on. Mm -hmm. And I also find it fascinating to see that some don't have that uh, expression. And I would like to see the the origin of the 
uh, it will be inter interesting to see the, the origin of the similarities and differences. Mm -hmm. And I also have a remark regarding the word reddened for the first mm -hmm. sentence. Okay. Because in French, this is, I think, the same uh, aspect you mentioned mm -hmm. about not using the word red, but a uh, softer word, because in French it would be, it would sound a little bit weird to say ciel rouge. Mm -hmm. uh, so w I think we would, we would use like rougeoyant, like mm -hmm. uh, reddened or or reddening, maybe, would be yes, the place, yes, right? Yes, that's more like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's it's definitely, I mean, I'm. yeah, it's definitely, It's. It, I, I can feel it as well as even more dynamic in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely great, yes. Thank you. Italian? Yeah, in Italian, it's like in Romanian, we can use this uh, metonymy and say that uh, a year of, of a person's life is uh, una primavera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about the sky, Cerul and Roshi? Uh, il cielo rosso, ma è Roshi, non so come si spune. Yeah, but, but maybe no, maybe it works with the red sky. So in in some languages, it it I'm sure it works like that. So rosso, you would say rosso, which means red, right? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, good. Thank you. How about Spanish? Uh, in Spanish, they also use uh, primaveras. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the sky, uh, they can say cielo rojo. But mm -hmm. I felt like, I don't know, maybe sangrando. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Um, Unsangerato. Okay, yes, that's another. And we, we can make um, like.